an opportunity today to do the same thing to the other finalists. Is to beat them in their home patch and take four points off them. Should have been six points if we beat them today. So, but I want you to be brave here. I want you to really uh, go out there on this pitch here today and be brave individually and collectively. Stadium, the Cosmos, all in green, and the first time these teams locked horns since the 80s. He's put a good cross into the box. There's a chance. Another great save by the goalkeeper. Opportunity though from the rebound, and FC Edmonton have the lead. Santa strikes it through the wall and into the back of the net. It's the equalizer for New York, and that's the last action of the match. And it's a share of the spoils at Clark Stadium. We matched them here, we should have beat them, and they scored only a free kick on us, and I think, well, we have a point to prove when we go there. And we just go in there with the attitude of we we're, we're going to win, as simple as that. Oh yeah, of course, and we want to go in there and spoil the party. We don't want to be on the field when they're running around, you know, with the championships. It's not just to spoil their party, but also to kind of send a message through the, uh, I guess the traditional ranks that Edmonton doesn't back down against New York. So. I've played the spoiler a lot and it's, it's fun to do, so I hope we can continue that. And I mean, we have lots to play for as well. We have our jobs to play for and pride on the line, so uh, it's, uh, there's, there's motivation from all angles at this point. We know it's difficult. We know that uh, they have a great deal at stake in terms of if they get a, a win against us, that puts them in the soccer ball final. So I'd like to spoil their party and I've got a group of players and staff that would like to help us do that. Uh, we have a six o'clock flight in the morning to Toronto and the guys will be there at four o'clock because now and again people forget passports, they uh, get lost or they forget other players which has happened this season already. Traveling day is not a rest day, you know, it's like you almost as tired as if you would have trained there. You know, it's a, it's a big day, it's a, it's a long day because you have to wait at the airport. Uh, sometimes you're not always uh, sitting, so you're just like standing up. Uh, the plane, uh, some, there's crying babies, there's, you know, there's pretty much everything on the plane, so you can't, you can't all, always sleep. So waking up that early, um, you just have to prepare yourselves for all week. From the week before, you know, you have to get your sleep in and hydrate a lot and, you know, get your right healthy, healthy foods in. and. Just really take care of yourself. No. Hello. Neil, what do you have to say to the camera? This is the Come on, Neil. <laughs> I'm not one to fall asleep on the plane, not because I'm not wired to do it, it's because I'm usually the biggest guy on the plane and those seats are so uncomfortable, so trying to get a comfortable position is the hardest thing. early or reasonably early on Sunday morning, uh, get the guys some breakfast, uh, then we'll go for a team walk and then after the walk we'll have a, a pre-game meeting 
where I'll discuss various tactics that we've worked on during the week, the, some of the strengths and weaknesses of the Cosmos and what we expect to see from, from our players uh, on Sunday against them. But I'm just wanting to see if they can break it down and that'll give us a platform to build on here today. And that's what's important, that we don't get disjointed, that we stay as compact as we possibly can. I want you to buy into what I'm asking you to do. I'm demanding that you do this job defensively. As soon as we do that, we'll start to get some chances, lads. We'll go for a team pre-match meal. Uh, which is adamant that everybody attends that. The guys have to get up and get breakfast, but I leave them to their own devices. I'm not a babysitter and I, they're professional football players. So I expect them to be able to look after themselves. Some managers are different. Some managers want every team to eat every meal on their own. And the one that I'm adamant that we eat together is the pre-match meal because it's such an important meal. Yeah, my pregame ritual is before I step on that field, I make sure that I'm 100% ready, 100% focused. And then I kind of like walk around the pitch and visualise in my head what I'm going to do during the game. Try and get some mental pictures in my head so that when I do go onto the pitch, um, I hopefully know the script that I'm, how I want to play. Well, you just come in the change room, get ready, listen to manager talk, listen to a bit of music and out for the warm up and that's it. final hour just, just start preparing and then last thing is on the field during the national anthem I always say a prayer and, and think about everyone in my life. Then I'll work my way into the change room and then that's when I listen to my music. If I usually stay to myself using my headphones and just listen to my music. I like listening to music. As long as I have a, a cup of coffee um, two hours before a game or so then I'm good to go. Right about half an hour before I go I have a coffee. Have a wee coffee and then I drink coffee before the game. Just socialising a bit, you know, it takes off the pressure a bit. As we go out, I'll put my top on, it's just, so it's some, just a routine that I've just stuck with. And I usually just tuck my shirt in before um, we go out, and as soon as the whistle blows, I usually take it out, I don't know why. With the shoe, actually, I always start with my left and then go to my right for some reason. You no, know, I'm mentally ready, I'm mentally there, and I'm ready to take the three points. And then once I do that, it's, it's pretty much game time. Be brave here, lads. So you've got an opportunity. The whole league wants you to beat them here today. The whole league wants you to beat them. We want to do it. You're f***ing playing for jobs, as we spoke about last week. So take that responsibility. Take the passion <coughs> and the desire and the caring that you put in every day to your training. Take that into this game. Do not come here and make the, no the, the numbers up. Other teams have probably come here and laid down to them. We don't f***ing lie down to anybody in this league or any team that we ever play against. So every player now, look at yourself, take the responsibility, demand more from yourself and you can get your result here today. You know that it's going to take 11 players on the park and the three subs coming on to commit to making this difficult for them to play. 
Every player now, stand up, be counted. When that f***ing anthem plays, stick your chest out even if you're not f***ing Canadian. We're here representing our Canadian club, our Canadian owner. So let's get after it here. Don't apologise for being here. Nobody or you're coming off. Every player, stand up and be counted. <laughs> Ronzano takes the shot, saved by Reynish. Oh, Senna got it from Mendez. Senna cracks it, it's deflected, and then tipped over by Parker. Driven ball across. Brought back down, quick shot taken, there's a the save for Reynish. Stepping inside of Zatella, looking, has a go at it, nice save by Reynish, that's his best. Right toward the middle, deflected out. Zatella heading it forward. One-headed Dimitrov, and then a flick, off Parker and in! Maselli, if it counts, one of in Cosmos. Lang drives it in, a miss there, and then a game-tying goal for Edmonton. Proctor snuck his way in, and it's 1-1 in the 90th minute. Shutout streak is over, but more importantly for the New York Cosmos, their shot at the soccer bowl to clinch it tonight could have ended on that corner kick. On a ball set across. It was pretty active, but it's always dangerous when it bounces like that. Proctor was able to sneak through. Lang taking it. There's the bounce. Cosmos had enough guys in white there to cover it. And Proctor just sneaks his way through to get his first goal of the season. And it's a killer goal against Kyle Rainish and the New York Cosmos.